To help fill a gap about local comprehensive data, the Our Kids Network completed a Halton Youth Impact Survey about child and youth well-being last spring. They recently released the findings they extrapolated from that survey, and I spoke with the Interim Executive Director, Dr. Liz Wells, earlier today to find out how Halton's youth are doing. We had an amazing response to the survey. So we had 2,599 young people between the ages of 9 to 18 from across 27 different neighborhoods in Halton participate in the survey. So we were thrilled with that large response and the diverse um, youth that participated from all across Halton. And it was covering a, a range of different topics from physical health to mental health to their relationships, community belonging experience their family life. What did the barometer say on mental health here in the region? It's a really critical finding. Um, we have been concerned obviously for some time with the pandemic and it is urgent that uh, youth well-being or youth mental health is uh, an urgent priority and what we found is it's not just for some youth is that mental health is an urgent priority. It's for all youth in Halton. Um, and we saw important differences in the experiences of mental health uh, for the diverse identities throughout um, the survey and throughout the region. So overall, um, only three in 10 or 33% of youth in Halton reported their mental health as very good or excellent. And that is very low. Um, we know that nationally, for example, self-rated mental health for youth did decline during the pandemic. So um, at the national level through Statistics Canada, we, have, we know that um, in 2018, youth self-rated mental health was um, 6 in 10 reported very good or excellent mental health. And then it dropped in 2020 to 4 in 10 reporting um, self-rated mental health as very good or excellent. So you can see that Halton being um, at three in 10 is very, very concerning. Were there any results that you found particularly surprising? Yeah, actually, even though we know that there are these differences based on people's diverse identities with how um, people experience their well-being, I think that was particularly surprising for me is how um, girls and youth who identified as non-binary, just how um, much lower their self-reported mental health actually was. That's very unfortunate. Um, yeah, it is. Um, when we look at other mental health indicators, um, for example, things like life satisfaction, which is a subjective assessment of your own personal well-being and happiness, we see other uh, stark differences like that as well, dependent on, on your identity and even where you are regionally. Uh, so for example, um, children and youth who disclosed that they were living with a, a chronic illness or disability, they were, um, reporting significantly lower life satisfaction than youth who do not have a chronic illness or disability. Um, but then we have interesting findings like children and youth who were not born in Canada report significantly higher levels of life satisfaction. So we, you know, there are so many differences in young people's experiences of well-being and mental health that are dependent on their diverse identities and even where they live in Halton. And it's important that we continue to discuss these findings and continue to explore them so that we can better understand what they mean, right? And but also working to like, together to identify ways uh, to support all youth in their mental health and their well-being. Okay. So Liz, if we wanted to find out more read like more specifically within the region, where where would we go online to find that data? So you could go online to the Arkids Network data portal. So you can go online and explore our findings uh, right now. And you can see that there's over 50 different indicators now about child and youth well-being in Halton. Um, so it's our interactive database, um, and you can explore the data at the neighborhood level across those 27 different neighborhoods, and you can explore it in maps, charts, um, and graphs. And we also just released, um, we'll be releasing a series of data action bulletins, and our first one was just released, and it's focused on mental health. 